Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE. Wrapping up day two of our coverage of HPE Discover 2023 from the Venetian Expo. Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante. We have a special segment up for you next. This is going to be exciting, Dave. Oh yeah. Let's blast off. Let's, let's literally blast off. We've got Norm Fallot here, Senior Director of Space Tech and Solutions at HPE, and Jarrett Matthews, Founder and CEO of Astrolab. Norm, take it away, this is a special segment. Yeah, it's a special segment. I'm using my special title for it as well. So first of all, thank you so much for taking the time and, and working this in. I'm just super, super excited to introduce you to someone who I think is going to change the universe, uh, our CEO of Astrolab. Mr. Jarrett Matthews, and uh, he is uh, really, he and his organization, we're partnering uh, to take edge computing uh, even further. You know, as, as you guys know, and particularly you, Dave, we've been on the International Space Station now for a few years, the most powerful computer ever to go to space. Uh, and we've been doing, you know, edge computing and really revolutionizing what's taking place up there from a computational science perspective. But we want to go further. Uh, and we believe that the organization and the team that's going to take us further and uh, is going to allow us to do some pretty exceptional things on the surface of the moon is Jarrett and his organization and Astrolab. So uh, it's with great excitement that I introduce you guys to him and his organization. And I hope it's a, a long and interesting relationship both for us and for you. Oh great, well thanks for, for making it happen, Norm. I really appreciate it. You wrapped us wrap up a couple of times. But yeah. I, I understand you got to go. Is that yeah, true? actually, I do, uh, and I apologize for that. I just have a, another commitment, but I thought it was so important that you guys had a chance to learn about Astrolab that I wanted. Come to on, what do you got to do that's more important than the cube? Well, I mean, you know, it has taken me a long time to get on this show, so it's all. <laughs> <laughs> no, come but on, you're teasing us. Where are you? Where are you? What, I, what do you I, do? And I'd rather not say. I, no, come on, really. Well, Actually, I'm going to go to the sound check for John Fogarty. You guys might be part of the ah! Come on. Yeah, I, hey, Leonard's hey, got hey. FOMO, big he time. He does. Hey, hey. <laughs> I know, it's true, it's true. You know, hey, I was born on the bayou, so I just got to go for it. Uh, hey, well, all right, we're going to give you a pass then. Okay. I don't blame you. I appreciate it. Uh, be gentle with him. We will. Yeah, all right. And we and hope we see you on stage with John later. Well, it depends on how the sound check goes. Hey, all <laughs> right. Okay, with that, thank you very thanks, much. Thanks, Norm. Right, thanks, Norm. Jared, great to have you. I was telling you before we went live, I have a space industry lineage as well, so anything about space is near and dear to my heart. Talk to us a little bit about Astrolab. You have a great background. JPL, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, for anyone that doesn't know it, SpaceX. What does Astrolab do? Why did you start the company? Um, well, thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited to talk to you about Astrolab. Yeah, Astrolab is a, is a startup. We were founded three years ago. Uh, we're based in Los Angeles. And uh, what we're doing is developing novel planetary robotic systems. Um, I started my career out at JPL, uh, and I ended up being there for 10 years, so uh, working on uh, a lot of the Mars rovers you, you may be familiar with, uh, Spirit and Opportunity yeah. and Curiosity. I was on the part of the design and uh, testing teams for those, as well as the, the operational teams. Um, and then I, I uh, moved over to SpaceX to uh, run their spacecraft mechanisms team and uh, develop things like the docking system that Dragon uses to dock to ISS. And, um, but uh, the genesis of Astrolab was really, uh, you know, started from being at SpaceX and seeing uh, really the development of their Starship lander, um, which is going to be the biggest rocket, you know, ever created. And, uh, and the opportunity that that represented in terms of what we'll soon be able to do on the moon and then eventually Mars. And so Astrolab is, is really developing the next link in the transportation network for the solar system. Ah, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, uh, unbelievable, so a couple things. The last uh, SpaceX launch, where the rocket you know blew up and it was like you know, the, the mainstream media was like, oh, big failure, but it wasn't. It was actually like an amazing success. Could you explain that to folks? Sure. Yeah. So uh, you know, w we actually have a booked ride to the moon on Starship uh, for mid 2026, and so because we are a customer of, of, of SpaceX, I uh, actually had the the good fortune of going down to Texas and. Uh, watching uh, you know, the first attempt uh, to fly Starship. And uh, from my perspective, it, it was a tremendous success. Um, and um, and I, you know, I, I, having spent seven years at that organization myself, I'm very confident that they're going to get there. Um, you know, they're trying something that's extremely hard. Um, but uh, they, they have the, a, a really incredible team and uh, deep, deep experience now. And, uh, accomplishing really hard goals, and I uh, have every confidence that they'll get there. Yeah. So that was a milestone in which they collected a lot of data, obviously, and now they're basically in the process of analyzing that so they can take 
the next step, right? Yes. A yeah. and, and what is that next step? Well, uh, they're obviously going to try to get to orbit on the on the next attempt, uh, and um, you know, and then that that should start uh, a, you know a long um, series of flights that will ultimately lead to to our ride to the moon uh, in mid 2026. Um, and uh, what's what's special is that, that that vehicle is able to put 100 tons down onto the, the lunar surface, um, and so it really changes what's uh, possible to do not only in space but on on the moon and eventually Mars. And it changes the economics of it and the, the scale at which you can do things. And so uh, if, you, if you haven't seen our rover on display here yet, uh, it's huge. <laughs> it's the size of an SUV. And uh, the reason for that is uh, it's really sized for the scale of these vehicles that are, are being developed. And um, what we're doing is, is really solving essentially the last mile transportation problem for the lunar yeah, surface. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like Norm is messing up the PA system I think here. so. We should let him go. I don't know, they might kick him out. <laughs> <laughs> Can you still hear us? Are we, are we okay? He's rocking up. Right. He still hear us. All right. I'd love to know a little bit more about Astrolab's partnership with HPE. Norm gave us a great introduction to you. And talk to us about that because everybody knows the International Space Station. A lot of people know about super together and, and as Norm was saying, uh, we want this to be a long-lasting partnership. What are some of your objectives? Well, so uh, we, we have a, a fundamental problem on the moon, or anyone who wants to operate on the moon, in that uh, there's a limited uh, you know, diameter pipe through which data can flow back to Earth. So there's limited bandwidth to get data back to Earth. And certainly for the first you know, five or 10 years of lunar development in, in the coming decade, the main export from the lunar surface is going to be data. And uh, where HPE comes in is that uh, with their edge computing capability is it's much better to send back refined data than, than raw data, right? And uh, I liken it to uh, some of our customers who are interested in doing mining on the moon. You know, it makes much more sense to process a, the, the, uh, the lunar regolith locally and, and extract the high value stuff. Uh, than to send all the raw material back to Earth. Well, data is no different. You know, you want to send back the insight and not not the raw data that you're working it's with. It's the ultimate yeah. edge use case, isn't it? It is. Right? I mean, so I mean, it's, it's instructive. So you kind of answered it, but but let me, let me ask it directly. Why why moon? Well, the I'll, I'll ask you a, a question, uh, and then then I'll talk about okay. that. How big do you think the moon is? Um, <laughs> let's see, uh, probably, I don't know, let's say 100 and... Com compare it to like a, I don't know. A, compared to the Earth. Yeah. Uh, maybe 300 moons? Actually, it's, it's, it's quite a bit bigger. Um, the, I think the best way to visualize it is the surface area of the moon is the same size as, the, the, uh, as Africa. Okay, so it's the size of the continent of Africa. Right? Now imagine if a new continent on Earth just popped up overnight in the Pacific Ocean, right? And all of a sudden there was this all, all this new land to explore and to derive value from and resources from. Well, that's essentially happening now because what's happening is uh, NASA and private industry are developing the long haul transportation network to get us to the moon frequently and cheaply. And so all of a sudden, we're going to have essentially this new continent to explore and derive value from. And, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> this is not normally a CUBE interview, <laughs> FYI. This is the CUBE after dark, Dave. Yeah, that might be it. They're going to bad moon rising. Okay. <laughs> Jura, thank you so much for joining us. This we is, out? like I said, a little unusual. Okay. But it really awesome what you're doing with Astrolab. Very aspirational, like David said, that is the ultimate edge use case. We'll definitely keep our eyes on Astrolab, what you guys are doing there with HPE, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. <laughs> John Fogarty rocking away. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, awesome. wow, amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, so we got the moon, it's got kind of the next frontier, the next continent of exploration, and then on as a way station to, to Mars. Yeah, and it's just like every other uh, expansion of humanity beyond the current horizon, you know, that's always been a huge economic opportunity, right? And uh, I kind of liken it to, uh, it's like we're in 1870 and the railroads are being built to California, you know? It's that level of opportunity. 
And I'm sure there were people in 1870 saying, why would you build a railroad to California? Yes. Right? There's right. It was really hard there. to fund that back yeah. in 1870s. Right. Nobody wanted to fund it. Yeah. Actually, President Lincoln made it happen. So. Exactly. <laughs> and now the, the, the two richest people on earth are pouring billions of dollars, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, pouring billions of dollars into developing a transportation network for the moon. And NASA is backing up their investment with their own billions of dollars. And so it's, it's, uh, soon it will become not only uh, frequent, but economical to send stuff to the moon. Uh, crazy, crazy to even think that, but your analogy about the railroad was fantastic. It gives us that perspective of, there's so much yet we don't know. There's so much of value, economic value that we can glean. So we're going to keep our eyes on this space. We're, lo we're losing it, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap. Go. Okay. We wanna thank you so much for watching our special yeah. Cube <laughs> After Dark segment with a whole sound check going on. <laughs> All thanks to Norm, That's, we let him go early, you see what happens. Yeah. We wanna thank our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin, and we're gonna say good night for now. Join us tomorrow, we have a great lineup of guests for our third and final day of covering HPE Discover 23.